European stocks are rebounding this morning from one-month lows, but debt fears throughout the region still rattling investors. Nariman Baravish has been covering the global economy for 35 years. He is the chief economist at IHS. He is one of the most accurate overall economic forecasters, making him Bloomberg best. He's with us now from Lexington, Massachusetts. Nariman, thanks for joining us this morning. Tons of anxiety about Europe's debt problems. I mean, there's this open dispute between the ECB, Eurozone governments, about what to do with Greece's large and growing debt burden. Negative report on Italy's credit rating. Belgium, Spain's elections showing resistance to austerity, resistance to change. Can Europe, as we know it, make it out alive? Um, it's unclear at this point. Uh, you've described what is both a political and an economic mess is the only way to describe it. Um, and what they've got on their hands is not only the, the sovereign debt problem, but as you were saying, a big, big disagreement between key players as to how to deal with this. You know, the politicians talking about a soft restructuring, ECB saying absolutely not. Um, and so the markets surprise, surprise, are unhappy about this. So you're getting essentially a big thumbs down on the part of the markets in terms of what Europe is planning to do vis-a-vis -vis this crisis. Now, Nariman, I mean, many investors see some sort of Greek default. I don't want to say broad default, but some piece of it as inevitable. What are the chances of that in your view? Well, I mean, if you just do a calculation on things like credit default swaps, I mean, the markets are betting 80% probability of, of a default. I think that's probably not unreasonable. I think we have to be a little careful. I, my sense, our sense is it's going to be a negotiated restructuring, call it reprofiling, whatever you want to call it, but some kind of negotiated settlement on this one. I think it's inevitable. That is inevitable. So I mean. that's inevitable. But then what happens to the markets in the meantime? I mean, is it just about the road that it takes to get from point A to point B that could either be somewhat limited and destabilizing or completely destabilizing? Well, what the European governments and the politicians had hoped was that these various rescue plans they put in place would buy them enough time, say a couple of years, to be able to solve this. I don't think it's going to do that. I think the markets are getting impatient. They don't see a real sort of light at the end of the tunnel. So I think some kind of solution is going to be forced one way or another by the markets. I would guess in the next you know, three, four, five months, something like that. Nariman, we know Moody says that a Greek restructuring would basically leave banks tied to the ECB, which clearly the ECB doesn't want. I have to ask yeah. you about a probability on that. Well, I think you're absolutely right, and they're right, in the sense that part of the solution has to be helping the banks, giving them some more money. I mean, I, I don't know how else to say it. There's a lot of Greek banks, European banks, including German banks, holding a lot of the sovereign debt. Part of the solution has to be helping them uh, with this, providing, you know, TARP-like money, whatever you want to call it, uh, to, help, to help them out. That's got to be part of the solution. How much do you think that would take? Oh, gosh. It's very, very hard to tell. Over a trillion euro. All right, over a trillion euro. Moody's also saying if Greece restructures, the credit ratings for other European sovereignties will automatically be affected. I take it you agree with that point as well? Absolutely. I think they'd be foolish to think they can just fix Greece without dealing with the other stuff. They're going to have to have a comprehensive agreement here. They're, they're shying away from that, obviously. I understand why, but they've got to do it. All right. Interconnected. Nariman, thanks so much.